Hello and welcome to this month's episode of Books and Brews with Robert Swathwood, Katrina Swathwood, Hello, Alan Berserker, Hello. and Sarah Martin. Martin. I, I, I thought it was Martin. <laughs> you wouldn't commit to it. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to say it. I wanted to say it. You're uh, correct, sir. So yeah, uh, last the last Books and Brew episode you heard we had... I gotta adjust this, sorry. Rookie. I know. The last Books and Brews episode we had... What was there? Six of us? There was a lot of people. Yeah, six of us. Uh, Sir Matt Dunford had the flu, so he's not at this one. Uh, Sam was a last minute back out. And our alternate, Brian, who said he was going to do it, uh, just decided not to start reading these things until an hour before the podcast. And you can't read... You know, three three trades, three trades in in one hour. So yeah, I told him not to not bother. Gonna happen. So uh, we had some some people fall out, but we did want to. We did pick some good places this month. We picked some interesting books. Our theme this month is Easter. He has risen. He has risen. And then we're not talking about Optimus Prime people. No. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we we decided to do brunch. We we got some good ciders, and we read books about. Jesus inspired. Jesus, Jesus inspired. El Salvador. Yeah. So uh, uh, we started the day. You know what? I'm going to take a back. Uh, I'm going to take a step back real quick. Uh, we talk a lot of local stuff on here, and if you've listened to the podcast in the past, you uh, you've heard me talk about my kids or and and, and baseball and stuff. And uh, my oldest son Parker is, is is a pretty decent baseball player. And and when your kids are passionate about something, I think a good parent tries to nurture that. So uh, he's a pretty decent pitcher, so we started sending him to pitching lessons, and this goes back to being being local. I just had to give a shout out to uh, the guys at Cutter Nation Baseball in uh, Santee off Prospect. They uh, Parker's been doing pitching lessons there, and, and and I know that's not in in tune and in in the vein of what we typically talk about on here, but since it is a local business and the guys are really badass and do and do a great job with kids, I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to to them because because if he loses he's out of the family yeah if he loses he's out of the family so no if anybody from cutter nation is listening to this you better you better keep doing what you're doing no they do great work no john and Cass are both really good guys and uh and the the second we left our park was like oh my god dad i love this so uh i just wanted to give them a little little shout out they're a local company so we might as well give them a shout out but uh no, we we started the day in downtown San Diego on Fourth Avenue at Werewolf for Ooh. yeah Werewolf for brunch, <laughs> and as time goes on, we won't be so biased with these. We will try a lot of new places, but for the first couple episodes, we wanted to try places that we knew we liked, that we were enthusiastic about, and Werewolf happens to be one of Katrina and I's favorite restaurants, if not our favorite restaurant downtown. Yeah, yeah, I, I love the food there. Oh, you don't? What, how do you feel about Breakfast Republic? Breakfast. Bleh. Breakfast. There's nothing wrong with Breakfast, Breakfast Republic. Breakfast Republic Breakfast. is the definition of just it's decent. It's not great. It's not bad. I'd rather have diner food, to be honest. Uh, but the wait is insane. And if you go right down the street, you can go to uh, San Diego's number one res- uh, restaurant that takes reservations, uh, Werewolf Pub. Is it Werewolf Pub? It is Werewolf Pub. I believe is it, it is. Is it Pub? Is it Bub? I don't have my phone. You should is probably have your phone, slow? producer. Uh, no, but we went in there. Uh, I do have my phone. Never mind. Yeah. We had some drinks. We had some food. Uh, I personally had the... Well, we got an order of breakfast balls. <laughs> yeah. Balls. Yeah. Well, their regular balls are pretty good, too. Yeah, they're yeah. called Papa's balls. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they both have potatoes? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Basically, what they are is... We're very sweaty or they're, salty, though. They're mashed potato balls with uh, bacon and... Uh, is there something else in there? I think there's cotilla cheese. On um, the regular the ones? Can you bring up the menu? I can. They're uh Werewolf they're, American Pub. See? I was oh. right. Uh they have basically they're fried mashed potatoes with bacon and, and scratch made gravy on it, and they are incredibly delicious. We all shared a plate of them. They come maybe eight, seven or eight to a, a yeah. plate. And they're if you stop in there, make sure to to get that. I know a lot of people that listen to this might be coming to Comic Con during the summer. It's a must place. It's an absolute must place. It's on Fourth Avenue. It's probably five blocks away from the convention center. It's not a bad walk. Um, they do themed stuff for every day of Comic Con. One day was Mortal Kombat. One was Ghostbusters last year. Uh, and the staff is 
amazing incredibly enthusiastic for comic-con and just insanely nice during the regular regular part of the year you guys you guys shared an appetizer right yeah we did. I, I was excited to share the homer pancakes with alan because i wanted to get them and something else but i knew i couldn't eat them all by myself so i was stoked to have a, a, a buddy to share those with and they were amazing they are fluffy mini pancakes with glazed donut icing sprinkles and raspberry jelly filling Mmm, sprinkles. I didn't have any today, but I've had them before, and they're yeah. they're pretty damn good. Yeah, definitely the it's got purple in it. And last I checked, purple, purple? is a fruit. <laughs> purple is a fruit. Purple, purple is, is a fruit. fruit. You heard it here. That's a Homer Simpson quote. Is it? Yeah. Uh, okay, so were you looking what's on the actual regular ones? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Cilantro, cotija cheese. This is not a good picture. I'm looking. You at. know you. you Bacon, scallion. This is a throwback to an earlier episode, but remember when you talked about controversial foods? Yes, I talked about this on there. Did you talk oh, about yeah, cilantro? It was the mint and oh no, I didn't debate, talk about right? cilantro. Yeah, mint and oh chocolate. no, oh, it was cilantro? the mint chocolate yeah. pineapple pizza what, what, debate. Where do people? Ugh. Where do people stand on the uh, the cilantro? I like cilantro a lot. What's wrong with cilantro? It's peppery. Some, peop- some people say it tastes like soap. What? Really? Who? Yeah. If I taste it now and it tastes like soap, I'm gonna be so mad at you. <laughs> I don't think it tastes like soap. Some people, I don't know. I, I, it's it's weird. I I think it tastes fine. I it's don't meant to add taste. a peppery flavor to whatever you're applying it to. It's like tarragon. That's like a licorice flavor. I like it a lot in small doses. If there's too much, sometimes I'll pick some of it off. But I, overall, I, I like it. and I don't think it tastes. I like think it's soap. good in moderation. I don't like it just thrown on though. A lot of times, I like it chopped up just a little bit. I feel like it releases yeah. a little bit more. Well, it's an aromatic. Aromatic. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I like using my nose. <laughs> <laughs> now i had the steak quesadilla which uh is something i've only ordered once before but i don't count it because i was so hung over that i couldn't eat <laughs> you much of taste it, it. <laughs> so uh that's the worst yeah i was like oh this will soak up some of the alcohol no it, it, it didn't did not. that must be hard my yeah my uh <laughs> my normal order is the steak scramble or the country fried steak or the pork belly benedict which are all good but i had the steak quesadilla which is it's a uh, flank steak with uh jack cheese eggs some house sauce, cilantro, and uh, corn sauce and sour cream. And it was amazing. I don't give it a B. I give it an A. It was excellent. Um, it was excellent. Ha <laughs> ha. Katrina ordered the... Uh, well, I ate half of that, and I ate half of Katrina's meal. Katrina got the uh, the uh, the old reliable. Yes. Country fried steak. Always good. Yeah. Delicious I, with potatoes I, and eggs. I do love their country fried steak, and I... It's their gravy. It is their really gravy good. is so good. I, and I, I got the... Um, the uh, pork belly uh, Benedict, but which I With also love cakes. the crap out of it. But yeah, I, I those are good. Not, uh, There's not stop that, eyeing her country fried steak. It's so good. I don't know what that was. Oh, his it's iPad fell over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, your what fell over? My tablet fell over. Oh, okay, no tablet. problem. I just thought it was one of the kids. I was like, no, uh, no, they don't. We would have heard screaming. Yeah, they don't have like a single dish that's like, oh, this is the best dish. It's uh, all good. Yeah, it's all very, very good. Their nachos are good. It's consistently good. And yeah. Th- and sometimes you don't see that in a lot of restaurants. You usually have one or two things that are good. I did that thing where I looked at the menu last night and I had three different things that I wanted to get. And then what I ordered today was none of those things. <laughs> and I have no regrets about that. What's fun is that they do seasonal menus too. Like yeah, they'll, they'll change it out, out every yeah. once in a while, which is cool. Well, it's, it's a dive bar with like a five-star chef. Like it's it's a legitimate chef in there changing, you know, with ingredients and changing uh for brunch, you were the only one that had lunch. That's true. I, I totally was going to go for some other choices, and then I ended up going for the bourbon bacon burger, and it was delicious. It and I really got it good. with the garlic fries, which was, they were really good. They were solid. Yeah, I, I, I can't say enough good things about Werewolf. We've literally, and I am an over-exaggerator, we've literally been there 25 times. Easy. There was one day we went breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, nice. that's that's a Comic Con thing where we're down there all day. We're not crazy. But still, people. no, that's that's oh, that's a commitment. <laughs> to go well, to no, when, well, everybody knows when you're on vacation, you you spend a little bit more. You kind of throw caution to the wind, and you you don't care as much about money. And and Comic Con is one of our. We don't take a lot of vacations. So Robert gets his money uh, gun and just starts shooting it everywhere. <laughs> I've gone way down in the last couple I'm of years as much as I used to spend. <laughs> that is very true. It used to be like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. A convention now it's, it's easy to do man. oh yeah it's comic-con's the best well now just our kids spend do. that and yeah. we get to kind of watch them spend money 
Yeah. We we tell the boys cha-ching, months cha-ching. ahead of time, which they should start saving now, that any money they save up will match it and they can spend it at Comic Con. Which is a mistake. <laughs> yeah. But then their grandma gives them like fifty bucks each, so they end up having like a hundred and fifty dollars each to spend. And then it all gets spent on Legos yep. and then I have to build it and then it gets destroyed like two days later. All on Legos. <laughs> and then you step on them afterwards because you missed <laughs> oh, a piece It's the worst. You know, Lego made a slipper <laughs> that's supposed to like protect I your saw feet. That. Oh my god. Of course I saw they that. did. <laughs> give me let me give them more of my money. Anyways, yeah, but great. Werewolf five stars, A plus. It's it doesn't get much better than that. And if I also enjoyed it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No complaints. Wait, 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 wait. No wait, complaints. Wait. He likes something, Robert. Oh Let him like something. Alan likes something. <laughs> yeah. I hated it. It was terrible. Uh, <laughs> bathrooms are clean. Bathrooms were clean. I didn't like the cassette that my receipt came in. What was it? Oh no, I was just joking. Oh, because Alan took it. Fucker. That's right, Alan. Kudos. Oh yeah, thank you for, for thank you for oh. brunch today, Alan. <laughs> I like how he quickly turns it around. Yeah. Like I oh. appreciate it. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. What was the cassette? Do you remember? I didn't even look at it because I was trying to. Get okay, because they actually have like it. a cassette holder on the wall, and they use that to put your receipt in when they bring it to you. That's mm. cool. That's I was fun. not paying attention to that. No. Oh okay. Uh, did you know that the uh, the family that owns Werewolf also owns the Hills and Eastbound? Uh, I go to the Hills quite a bit. Yeah, yeah they, I like the good. Hills. They yeah, own, I've been there too. They own all those places. Yeah, I've they, actually never been to the Hills. They've been very good to us uh, when I worked at the G Spot. We'd get off in the morning and they'd let us come in a little bit before opening and decompress from the night. Oh. Yeah, so that's they're, nice. They're, they're good people there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and the staff at all of those places, you can tell our our quality. They're all. Oh, yeah. uh, I like when people introduce themselves. Like, hi, my name is like. And the waitress today, she's like, I know I I've know waited you on people. you before. Well, I, That's not awkward at enough. all. Yeah, uh, no, but it's really good. And um, the place we picked up our booze from this time around wasn't. It's not a beer. We went to uh, Serpentine Cider. A natural cidery. A natural cidery. No artificial coloring or ingredients or extracts. Yeah, all natural. Why are you looking at me when you say that? We're not trying to natural, poison baby. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's a really big deal. Like the first thing that people say when I say I like ciders is like, oh, is there so much sugar in them? Oh, they, you know. Blah, I blah, thought the blah, first blah, thing blah. people ask is why you don't like gluten. Isn't that why people drink ciders? Well, ciders Sometimes. Are gluten-free. Sometimes. Gluten-free. Sometimes. That's definitely not my case. Yeah. I love the gluten. Um, I, 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 I enjoy ciders. I, I do. Uh, I'm a beer guy, but I do enjoy the occasional cider. I, I like a good dry cider, yeah. Um, so we went to Serpentine, which is in the Miralani district. The Miralani walkabout last Saturday of the month. Yeah, in uh, San Diego, which the closest Main Street is what, Miramar Road? Yes. It's tucked away. There's a lot of, of breweries, different places. In... There's also an eatery in there, too. Yeah, yes. well, well, we'll get there. Serpentine is in the one building, is Serpentine Ciders. Um, Lost Cause Meadery. Lost Cause Meadery. And, and then they have Good a little... Food Seed Company. Yeah. All in the same spot. It's a really... I went there for the first time last weekend. Uh, to be honest, we were supposed to do this podcast last weekend, but uh, I drank way too many sugary drinks and got a super bad hangover and was out of commission the entire day. Because <laughs> normal people, unlike Alan, when you hit your 30s, and I'm assuming older, when you have a bad hangover, it lasts more than just a couple hours. <laughs> it almost makes you wonder if it's worth it. It's not. And I stopped drinking like that, but I got hit with the sugar. I wasn't. I don't usually drink lemon vodka and lemonade. I'm a beer drinker, so when I drank all that sugar, the that next day so I was good. like, "Blah!" I do. Ha- you know, I, I kind of brought over my hangover cures for you. <laughs> next time, I sh- I Robert wasn't had you. talking to anybody all day. Yeah, until like four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, and I hate it because it's a wasted day. I hate wasting time. I get that. But I think I slept on the couch until like noon. Yeah, deep that day. Mm-hmm. Who was watching the kids? They were here with me. I they was like half themselves. asleep. I, w- I was fully asleep. Yeah, I was like half asleep. <laughs> well, I woke up and my stomach was upset. And I, 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 the thing that pissed me off the most is I was, I was up until like five in the morning. I couldn't sleep, and I finally went. And I didn't have a hangover at five in the morning. And I woke up an hour and a half later. I'm like, my stomach hurts. It's after you've processed all that through your liver. And- so I made myself throw up, and I'm like, I feel way better. So I had crackers and a big glass of water. And then no, like 30 minutes not. later, I needed to throw up again. And it was still all liquid except for the Ritz crackers that got lodged in my throat. And I had to like mama bird regurgitate that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know people like hearing that noise on a yep. podcast. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let's give them a good visual, Robert. So I had to spit it all out. <laughs> and it was all just 
lemonade and lemon vodka and oh, so good. Ugh, it was bad coming up. Deep Betty. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, they were delicious, yeah. but I'm not. Tip- I don't typically drink sugar like that. Yeah. The Deep Eddy doesn't really give me a hangover, uh-huh. even if I drink a lot of it. But uh, no, what what cider is this, Katrina, from Serpentine? So this is the Apricot Hops Cider from Serpentine. I liked this one a lot because it's kind of like a... Uh, uh, it oh, is kind of like a I beer. I can try it now. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. It's it's really good. Yeah, they I use like fresh pressed apple juice. I like that. Yeah. Very tasty. I really like cider a lot. And this I one. Uh, it's good. Just I'm not a fan of apricots, and I don't taste the, a lot of apricot. Really? Yeah. I think it's pretty strong. Yeah, I feel like I totally taste it. It's not as much as I was expecting. Uh-oh. It did not live up to his expectation. <laughs> no, that's a what good thing. What a surprise. I don't like apricots. So You don't? It, no. Oh, I love so apricots. So if you like apricots, you'll like this cider. And if you don't like apricots, you you'll will tolerate like it. it. You will tolerate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, this is this is... Like how a cider should be dry with a good mm-hmm. bite. Just ahead of time, uh, Alan likes dry ciders. He's not a big sweet guy. So, uh, oh, so, oh, well, everybody knows you're dead inside. It's uh, true. <laughs> we have to so warn them. So, if you are the serpentine people, we love your stuff, but Alan isn't the biggest cider drinker. So, but he likes it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, like I said, I drink an occasional cider, but I'm picky about them. Uh, the one, there was two that they wouldn't do growler fills of. There was oh, an the autumn. autumn berry one was amazing. There was an autumn one that and was... And the decisor. I think those were my two favorites and they wouldn't fill them. I don't think you liked the... Wait, was that the plum one? I thought the decisor the was decisor from The decisor is the meadery. Okay. There was a, a sizer that you wanted to try because it had plum it was, in yeah, it. Yeah, it was a plum. It was a you, little too sweet for you me. You didn't really like it. Yeah. You and Brian did, but it was a little was too okay. sweet for me. But... uh It was my favorite. The autumn berry was my favorite. Yeah, it was by delicious. Far. Oh, you could be drunk like the rhinos at the zoo. That's what I remember at the zoo. So the rhinos what? got drunk because they had a plum tree in there and encountered and the plums would fall off and ferment and they'd eat them. Oh, would they okay. just run into the wall? Yeah. <laughs> Flop over. That's I so read, sad. I read a small article that it's, said it, that elephants look at people like we look at dogs, like that they're cute. and They just kind of run and frolic around. I guess. I, I, I don't know. I, that would make sense of how large on, they Alan, are. You know it all. You know everything. Like that's my mom that's into elephants. That was That was when we were a kid. That's when we, we were a kid. Yeah. When no, we, when we were a kid. Is that kind of how like my grandma was into clowns? So there was like clown pictures everywhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, she had like elephant stuff, but whenever we'd go to the zoo, she, we had, um, you had zoo to membership. Go to- it was going to the zoo was going to look at elephants and only elephants. Well, yeah, you I was, didn't look at anything else. Uh, you did, but it was very rushed because it was going back. To well, we didn't go elephants. to the zoo where I lived because it was just sad. You just so. watch them play and then they like, and just hours and hours. And you just, elephants are boring after a while. I went to the zoo in Sacramento with Katrina one time and there was like this big thing outside that said, the penguins are back. The penguins are back. And we went in there and it was like, were they gay penguins? It was like four. Yeah. Leslie Note married them. Nice. Uh, <laughs> or wed them. Uh, there was like three or four penguins behind a glass that it was like a four foot wide enclosure. I'm like, what is going on at this terrible zoo? It was like seven dollars to get in. It was, it was bad. It's a very sad. The, the thing you went to was the ice cream social during the summer. Ooh, and unlimited ice cream. Ooh. Prescott, Arizona's got a tiny little zoo, but they have like uh, they have like a lot of local wildlife and they and have a, lions and, and a tiger. Yeah, mm. they, you have a tiger. The San Diego Zoo is pretty much second to none. Yeah. Some I mean. some kid is playing like tiger sounds on his phone, and the tiger immediately like sprayed him. Oh my god. <laughs> That, that was is excellent. Like, that was why would you funny. want to piss off a tiger? It didn't even piss him off. He thought there was another tiger around, so he just like sprayed his ear into Marcus territory. The kid was standing right in front. It's of like it. when I'm driving around the neighborhood and there's like a skunk walking around and it kind of lifts up its tail yeah. and I come around the corner. I had to run one day. <laughs> yeah, so you kind of shoot them with their own stink, I guess. It would be the equivalent of it. I went to the San Diego Zoo this morning because I got in an hour early because I have the Keeper's Pass. Nice. I love the what San Diego Zoo. Yeah, that's cool. Um, if you have the Keeper's Pass, one Saturday a month you get to go in at 8 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. And everybody was there to see the pandas because they're leaving. And so there was like oh, 100 people in line to see is the up. pandas. I never was big on pandas. They're cute, but they just sit there. They don't really do anything. Well, it's because they're bears. Yeah. They just it's because I have a beef with the panda. Oh. You have a what? I have beef with pandas. Why? He has bamboo with the pandas. No, it just... There's a reason why they're going extinct, and that is because evolution. Everything kills them. Everything kills them. So are you Try saying they're stupid. that they shouldn't have survived this far? <laughs> yes. Okay. We are we are we are fighting against Mother Nature at this point. Aww. This is not a man-made uh, endangerment. <laughs> you, what is it like? You change the type of bamboo they eat, they die. You startle them, they die. They don't want to breed, so they die. Everything kills pandas. 
They're pathetic, okay. and they're not cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a panda would, you know, beg to differ in the presence. They probably wouldn't. They're so fucking lazy. <laughs> They'd probably just roll over and die. They make great kung fu masters. I do like kung fu. I don't get... Oh, is that a... Yeah. yeah. Nice. Kids movie. You're dead inside. I am. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, as we as we go along talking about our comic books today, uh, we will be drinking more cider, and we have three different kinds. After so get this ready one. to drink it up. <laughs> so, bottoms up. Yeah. So we we have more. Uh, but our, our our first dive into books, I feel, needs to be the uh, the most the most fun, the most kind of whimsical, whimsical, carefree. <sighs> The f- the felt or the floor. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. She's new. She's new. <laughs> uh, you get a pass. Forget the me. first uh, <laughs> the first one. You're fine. We will have to discuss is Battle Pope. Yay! The Battle Pope. Tell us about so Battle Pope, Robert. Where did I? I had the little synopsis right here. I believe you met the author, right? Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! Stop! <laughs> you're embarrassing me. <laughs> uh, you're making him turn red. Uh, Battle Pope from Robert Kirkman to Tony Moore, which I believe is, uh, was it Kirkman's first put out work? Pretty early on. 2000 or something? From Funkotron. So it was, uh, if if you don't know Kirkman, he's most famous for Walking Dead and Invincible. Um, he has been on this podcast a couple times, but. Uh, did you read the introduction? And I did. Is, I thought that was funny. Did you confirm that he's a listener? Uh, he's listened to a handful of episodes. Okay. Yeah, because he, he called us out one of the times he was on about something Corey said in a previous episode. Nice. Yeah. Take that, Corey. He also he also messed, messed with Corey saying, wasn't he here to be like the snarky... Antagonist, like, yeah. yeah. But uh, Battle Pope is a comic created by Robert Kirkman and Tony Moore. Ooh. Uh, Tell me more. The book tells the tale of a hard-drinking, womanizing Pope contemned by God for his own evil ways, who's called to action to save St. Michael with the help of Jesus H. Christ, becoming mankind's final hope in a world overrun by demons following the rapture. Uh, the book came out in, what, 2000? Yeah, I think. I'm yeah, originally in 2000. Um, I was introduced to Robert Kirkman stuff early on from The Walking Dead. I started collecting on issue four, so I've been collecting for like 16 years. And when I liked it, I, I looked into other stuff. I didn't look into Invincible right away, but I saw Battle Pope, and I was like, oh, that looks funny. So I, I picked that up as well. And funny it was. And it is a fun book. Well, it, so it was pre-image. Uh, you, you'd consider it an indie comic then, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, even though Image was an indie comic, they're considered mainstream now, right? They're the third largest publisher. Uh, publisher. Yeah. I still think they're like, an indie comic is in, they... they I don't know how specific you get on that, but like it's all creator owned stuff, and those are people bringing their books to well, that image. Was, that was a radical, yeah, change. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, it's still like that. These people wouldn't be getting their. I mean, if they didn't get their stuff done through Image, they'd be getting it, put it out themselves or somewhere else. Um, I have to submit a book to Image. Oh, tell me about it. No, I've talked about it enough. Have you? Yeah, yeah. We're we're Jesus focused right now. Yeah, if you want to buy a copy of Point Pleasant by Robert Swathwood and Michael Yakutis, you can DM me on Twitter and I will send you a copy. Or you can buy it for on a small fee. No, it's on a comic. Is it on Comicsology now? Wasn't it? No, it's on. Uh, oh, it is online. You could buy it, but I can't yeah. remember the name of that site. I meant to submit it to Comicsology, but I didn't. Oh, don't. it's on. Right. It's but if on, you want to slide to his DMs and send him a picture of your wiener, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because then do that. I'll no, have to do see that. that, and I don't want to see that. Robert wants to see it all. I don't. Throw him all the hot dogs. Oh. Clearly, clearly, you want to see that all. Yeah, send him to <laughs> send him to Alan. Yeah, send him to Alan. <laughs> um, now I need to look at what this is at, so I can. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, geez, thanks for writing a comic, Robert. Trying to give you a plug. Whoopsies. Uh, MyComicShop.com. There you go. So y- you can read it there. And you can, uh, hey, it's in stock. That's not mine. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's not mine. It's oh. another book with the same name. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm not too Someone concerned needs about to it. Someone copyright it. Patent pending. We got dibs. I'm pretty sure it was on there though. Whatever. I'll I'll, I'll update you with that at a later time. And date. So battle pope. Yeah, battle pope. El Senor Popo. Um. So you get this kind of like fat little pope before 
before the the second coming, basically. Well, you notice he was trained by uh, Bruce Lee, Bruce John Paul. Yeah, who yeah, kicks the crap out of him and gets Bruce Lee to yeah train him how to fight. <laughs> so you get this, you know, fat little Pope who uh, dies during this. Well, basically, the second coming happens, and then they they end up shutting hell, and then and then the demons live on Earth with the humans. That weren't saved. That weren't saved. Yes. And uh, the Pope dies, and, and God asks him a favor, basically, and tells him that he can get into heaven. How did the Pope die? He got uh, ripped, ripped apart, apart. By a demon. By a big demon. <laughs> With a tiny wiener. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of emphasis on that tiny pecker. Yeah. 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 While, while he was uh, post-coital with uh, a woman. Yeah. Who also got ripped up. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then he goes to heaven and, and God says, uh, you will, we will let you into heaven if you save uh, Michael, who is, is his general protecting the people on earth. Meaning the archangel Michael. Yes. Yes. And uh, he sends Jesus, who's great. He had no pupils and it freaked me Jesus out. Jesus Hector Christ. <laughs> yeah. I, he was excellent. And Jesus is the... short shorts and his uh, where's yeah. the beer shirt. Yeah. yeah. I, I, party I, animal At one Jesus. point he's wearing a what would I do shirt. Yeah. Yes. That cracked me up so much. I mean... <laughs> But he still got his thorns, so. Yeah. I mean, nobody. It's Jesus. Yeah. He's a lovable schmo, he, and he's he, terrible at his job. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> they gave him a gun, though. Like someone was stupid enough to do that. Yeah. I like that when, uh, when the, uh, you know, they make the Pope super muscular, superhero physique when he comes back down, and he can't stop staring at his own ass. Yeah. <laughs> or or checking so out his own dong. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, I they made that huge they too. Made him bigger. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice line uh it's good writing there mr kirkman yeah i i enjoyed the book uh i need to break out the other trades and and reread it through again just for funsies because yeah. we just read the first trade it and was uh, so fun. yeah it is a fun uh i'm with all the books we're reading today I, i'm wondering what kind of well with with battle pope like you said it was an indie book i'm sure there wasn't much outrage but with punk rock jesus and uh Jesus Freak, which are the other two books we're reading. Uh, I'm wondering what the public outrage was. Was there a public outrage? There was for Jesus Freak. Well, that's how I heard of Jesus Freak was through Fox News. Go on. How dare they let this publishing? Are we moving occur? on to Jesus no, Freak? I, don't I mean, think we so. want to talk about Not Battle Pope. No, okay, but we'll, I, we'll talk I, about we'll Jesus Freak next. We'll get there. I didn't hear any controversy about Battle Pope, but well, the controversy I heard was when we were at Comic Con and some kid was talking about reading it. Do you remember that uh-uh. during the panel? And Kirkman was like, I don't know why your parents are letting you read that. Mm -hmm. That's a reoccurring thing with him because it's like, he said, oh, yeah, people will come up to me at convention and say, oh, we watched Walking Dead with our kids. And he's like, I don't agree with this. (laughs) (laughs) What? 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 (laughs) Yeah, I don't. There's a third Walking Dead series being made on AMC. (sighs) You don't, you can't, you can't do that, man. You don't know. It's too much, man. It's, it's too much. Uh, You know what? There, there's, there's good things about all the series, and I feel like um, uh, the main Walking Dead series took a little bit of a dip. Did they take? Did they fix the pacing problem that's been since episode one? There hasn't uh. been a pacing issue since episode one. Just because you felt there was pacing issue in one episode out of a hundred episodes, I watched you three. Watched. Oh, I watched the first three. That, but I don't think that's Give always a good. An award. Says the guy that told me, "Hey, get through the first season of Parks and Rec, and then it gets good." And that's true. <laughs> it's a very short season, too. What? That's why. Walking Dead? No. Walking Dead season one is shorter than season one of Parks and Rec. Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Also, watch time is probably the same, though. Uh, no, because the first season of Walking Dead was only six hours. How many episodes are in the pr- first of, uh, season of Parks and Rec? It's like, like a million. Ten, it feels like a year. Yeah, but it's not just the first season of Parks and Rec. It's still Brandanowitz leaves. Like, it's not good until they fix Leslie Nope. <laughs> And that's not a thing. They brought in new writers. They changed the thing. I read a big, uh, big article. About it. We're not talking about Parks and Rec. And uh, <laughs> brought it up. On me. <laughs> Walking Dead has had How some pacing issues here? here and there, but I think overall the the uh, it has had its ups and downs. But I think it's on kind of an upswing um, with the way they're treating Negan and 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 certain things going on. And well. I don't know how we got so on the tangent of Walking Dead. No, I do. I I brought it up because I was talking about Kirkman. Um, I like how they use ow and ouchie throughout the entire book. (laughs) That cracks me up. Huge demons who are like the size of a building. (laughs) Ouchie. 
<laughs> like a child. <laughs> like, oh, that's supposed to hurt. Or I don't know. Reminds me a little bit of the South Park Satan, you know? Yeah, a little bit. Don't hurt me. No, that was fun. <laughs> and how uh, Michael is just this, like, grizzled old hard ass, like, Clint Eastwood meets John Wayne meets Sam Peckinpah. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Calls, calls Jesus a pansy. <laughs> of course he would. Yeah. He's running around in a Hawaiian shirt. And he's a short big party shorts animal. And short cut off jean shorts. Yes. Uh, like in the beginning, he's wearing pants. And, and sandals. Like, how are you going to run in those shoes? Well, it, it, sandals because he's, you know, 2,000 years old. And that's all they had back then. then well, he's Jordans. wearing flip flops. He's not wearing some like lace up sandals that they wore back. He got he got used to day. a certain style of shoe. <laughs> and he then he an kept the chancla toe. going. Yeah. He's open. all about the chancla. Chanclas. God. <laughs> but there's been good things about both Walking Dead series. I haven't caught up on Fear the Walking Dead, but it's supposed to be a really good season this last season. What 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 would you say the? Uh, I know why you like Walking Dead because you talk about it a bunch, but uh, you don't talk about Fear the Walking Dead. What's the redeeming quality to that? Uh, you know, it's. I feel like it was making us care about characters that we weren't used to. You know, it's it's hard to bring in. I did like Fear at the beginning because it started in L.A. And it started at the point of outbreak. Take that, L.A. Yeah, so it's nice uh, that was LA cool. Burn. And it, it's just some different characters, and it's, it's you know, kind of people. You said they shifted Morgan over to Fear the Walking Dead Yeah, now. and same thing with uh, Dwight. And Dwight. Do we get to really? Yeah. Oh. So, um, but uh, let's take a step back. Um, it's quasi-related. You're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I really enjoy Battle Poop. I I like the placement to cover up penises or the yeah. area. They do a good job. Yeah, I thought that With was the blurbs. tasteful and uh, sophomoric and just good fun. What's funny is is seeing Tony Moore's work then yeah, compared versus to now. now. Yeah, because yeah. he's, I mean, he's not extremely, he can't be on a book for a really, really, really long time. He seems to not be able to, to keep pace. That's what happened with Walking Dead and, and, and stuff like that. But, I mean, he's an amazing artist. And uh, he seems like a pretty interesting guy. I follow him on Instagram. He's that guy's tatted like ninety percent of his body. It's got to be curious. Like, how do you how do you pitch a book like this? You don't. You make it yourself, and then once you get another book in, you have this like, one hey. put out. Hey, since I've already made this, uh, exactly, <laughs> sell this, totally. exactly, because uh, my other book's printing money. Yep, print my other one. Yeah. Um, I also liked Lucifer going out to get bread to make a sandwich. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. good. They treated the demons pretty well. Like how his eyes are just missing. <laughs> yeah. Like Jesus has no pupils. Like yeah. It's just white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's holy, right? I don't consider God it God didn't holy. have pupils either. Or halo coasters. Well, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Go back to. I liked when they they have all the people there that are crucified and the dude's eating off of him. And yeah. they're like friends. He's like, no, leave me here. <laughs> Reminds me. Uh, do you ever watch... Like the old Looney Tunes cartoon, the one with the wolf and the the, coyote. the, sh- the sheep hound, yeah. Oh, and wait, they would what? like they would change shifts and be like, "Oh, hey, how's it going, oh, George?" Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, all right, see you later, Fred. <laughs> I don't remember that. Then they clock in together, and then it's like serious business. Like it's time oh, to fight. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, they have a job to do. Yeah, that's that, that's what it is. It, it felt cartoony. It was like watching like yeah, an old fun. Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, I which. Agree. Which is complete not a, not op- a not a knockoff at all. It's, which is complete opposite yeah. to uh, the other books that we read. Yes. Yeah, it was definitely. How does his hat stone. stay on when he's jumping around and like kicking people? <laughs> Didn't Kirkman say what the hat was called on here? Maybe it was another thing. Maybe we were talking about something else. Because what's the Pope hat called? Oh, I know what it's called. Because uh, you could equip it. It's a uh, miter. I think you're right. Yeah, M I T I R or E R. Yeah. The Pope's hat may refer to a palpa tiara. Doesn't matter. I call it a Pope hat. I think my favorite image of him is when he's got his Pope hat on and then he's wearing that thong that was Jesus's that says, Come get a, and then peace. it has a peace sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, it is. It's called, it's a miter. There's a, you know, a lot of role playing games where you, you can get like a Pope hat as an equipable item and I've always put it on my characters and take all their clothes off and just walk around wearing nothing but a Pope hat. 
in Fallout, I I got a hat that was like a captain's hat, like a oh, like yeah. the Revolutionary War one. Yeah, the tricorn. And I wore it the entire time, even though it wasn't the best situation for me. So everybody knew that I was in charge. <laughs> like when you uh, finish the the ship and you get the cat the. You get the lieutenant's cap in the middle of that, and then you get the captain's hat after you finish the USS Constitution. Sub- yes. Yeah. Sure. If like that. So. Yeah. Um, Just like that. I like, I like silly hats and games. Yeah. Silly hats and yeah. games. I'm sure, that's a Monty Python joke, right? The Ministry of Silly Hats or something. No, it's Silly Walks. It is. Yeah. Uh, is, did you want to say anything, Sarah, before we moved on to the next one? Oh, I think we covered Mickey it. Mouse Pez. I yes. wrote that down. All right. I did like that. Anyway. What? The Mickey Mouse Pez. There was like a in one of the shots. There's like a Mickey Mouse Pez, and it's like spitting out Pez. It's the shot where he says, "When when I remove my presence from Earth, everything went crazy." And like, so there's all this mayhem, and you just see it like right floating there. in the air. It's pretty cool. I wrote it down. Uh, <laughs> it must have struck me. I didn't for even some look reason. at my notes. Battle Pope, fun book. <laughs> Period. Over. Solid writing. <laughs> Give this man a Pulitzer. Lots of dong jokes. I do like dong jokes. There is nothing wrong with dong jokes. Yeah. Uh, we've all established that they make me giggle. But our, uh, uh, you guys got to finish these drinks so we could try the next cider. Oh, please. Mm. Well, what's Ooh. next up on the... I'll just drink it all. The docket. Uh, Jesus Freak. Oh, I we- meant like the cider. Oh, uh, um, I don't know. I can go grab it. You want me to go grab it? Sure. I'll go grab it. I'm pretty sure it's a dry apple. You're a dry apple. Drapple. Oh, Along the same vein of the Mickey Mouse Pez, I noticed, too, one thing that stood out to me was when they were in hell, Teletubbies were playing on the television. Yes! <laughs> oh, God. Of course they were. Now they're irrelevant. Are they? I don't know. The kids still watch. Oh. What's next? Oh, Blood Orange. Blood Orange. How many are there total? Coming to you from the state of Florida, Blood Orange. Is that uh, where blood oranges are? I have no grown? idea. I know Florida makes oranges or grows oranges. They, well, yeah. they make oranges. They make oranges. <laughs> they make oranges. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't well, that uh, what most of Epcot Epcot was? Was orange groves, right? That's where Anaheim. Also Anaheim too, right? Yeah. yeah. Anaheim. 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 Okay, so next one is a uh, a blood orange. It's a seven percent. I ABV. like blood orange. You know what? This is gonna spit all over me. Yep. Uh, Pop blood, it. Blood diamonds. Be uh, for you listening at home, he did not spill it on anything yet. <laughs> but it is a metal growler, or a growly, as it is often called by Robert. I think grown in California. Hmm? Blood oranges are grown in California. They're grown in California. Only? No. Blood orange. Oh, man, this one's so good. I think it's my least favorite out of the ones we got. Really? I like it a lot. Oh, it's really good, but it's like, it's very distinct and it's got a strong, strong flavor. Can't so I could see how I like, I, I can't have much more than like a taster of this. That's fine. We'll have a, we can save the growlers till tomorrow. We had to finish the crawler yeah. today. Because once you open the crawler, you got to finish it. But we have a little bit of time that for the growler. The yes. Yeah, so we already finished that one. Smells, smells like oranges. It's like maybe cinnamon or yeah there's a spice or like spice. a star anise or something like a mm-hmm. like some sort of allspice mm-hmm. it's really all spark he died for our sin be great at, like, <laughs> that was a great <laughs> let's tell your kids about your kids were talking about uh, yes. transformers and i was telling them about the original transformers movie where i was like do you remember when optimus prime died and they'd never seen it and i was like well he died for your sins <laughs> And then it, Robert turns back and like, are you teaching my kids about Jesus? I'm like, no, man, just Optimus Prime. That's okay. Carry on. It's because well, Optimus Prime did die and then come is, back. As I was okay with you teaching them about Optimus Prime, but I wouldn't be okay with you teaching them about Jesus. But again, I'm wearing <laughs> they a- They already get that in school. I'm wearing a shirt for the band Deicide, uh, <laughs> the furthest you could probably get from a Religi- pro-Jesus. That's why it was, it, was, it was 50-50. I was like I surprised. I caught him off that, guard. Yeah. He's like, wait, what? Um, <laughs> no, but the, that was a good moment. Uh I like this blood orange cider a lot. You know what's funny is I like it better more now than I did when we tasted but it. But you're right. It is good as a taster, you know, like sipping it just a it's little bit. It's a good bit. palate cleanser. Not a full pour. Yeah. 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 
And yeah, I do taste. Uh, it's like clover. Um, yeah, uh, clover allspice. I taste. With a nice they do little... use spices. They do use herbs. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just don't do the serpentine anything cider. Again. Ooh, do they use eleven spices and herbs that are secret? They're not Kentucky not the fried kernel. chicken. No, they would uh, not use that. That's what you should cosplay for Comic Con, Colonel Sanders, just as a Kentucky Colonel. So <laughs> Katrina and I were discussing because we go trick or treating at Disneyland every year. Fun. It is. It's so a much of fun. fun. It's an extra cost. I you don't just get to go. Of course, it is an extra cost. Of course, it is. I'm an annual passport holder. Just we will be again there. in October. I haven't been in over five years. You're not even gonna go do Star Wars. Dead inside. <sighs> I no, because here's what's gonna happen. I'm never gonna get picked for the Jedi Academy ever. <laughs> you're just bitter. <laughs> Why? Because they think you're a Sith. That's not their fault. No, I, I, they can feel it. I get outed as the rebel spy. <laughs> you have no midi chlorians. <laughs> <laughs> so say you. <laughs> uh, no, it's gonna be a good time, man. No, yeah. but Katrina and I were talking about her going as Kylo Ren and me going as Ray. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so you guys know about the lottery thing? They're yeah. Doing and everything? The first couple months, they're gonna do a lottery yeah. system for the, uh, ride. the ride. Yeah, my pa- I have like the cheapest passport, and so it's just like you can't go. In <laughs> don't even show up all of the time. <laughs> we don't want you. Here. Pool's closed. <laughs> Uh, no, but our, they won't uh, even let you in the gate to come walking around the land. Like, sorry. Yeah, I mean the interactive stuff sounds fun. The roller coasters, I've you know, been there, done that. I don't. This is, the, I mean, but since you've gone, technology has has made rides completely different. Uh, like when I went on Gringotts in in Florida for the Harry Potter thing, I was like, it's something I've never experienced before. They really, they really. It's different. Mm-hmm. It, it's not just a regular roller coaster. I also think Universal feels the pressure to push the limits. Though. They do, but like it was the same thing with the uh, the Avatar ride, or even uh, the that ride is crazy. Yeah, or even the Mine Train. Wasn't that all just like a VR ride? Or kind whatever? of. It, but it's completely immersive. Like you don't see anything else around you besides the experience you're having, unless you're Robert. Wow. And you I have had to, to take care of all take of care of a screaming, screaming child. After we waited two and a half hours for the ride. <laughs> But like you, you're on a banshee, and you can feel the banshee breathing between your legs. Like it's 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 a lot. It's over the top. Yet there were no Bort license plates. Did you see <laughs> Andy Samberg's shirt? No. Someone made him a Bort Simpson shirt. Nice. Bort Check Andy Samberg. Sandy, he was wearing Sandy Amberg. <laughs> Sandy Amberg. <laughs> Sandy Samberg. Uh, no, but the next comic is Jesus Freak, which is the most recent. You realize this came out March twentieth of last. Yeah, the week. hardcover yeah. just came out, right? Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't released in single issues. It's just one. Well, yeah. I can see why. Yeah. Uh, Which is yeah. funny. It says the year is 26 CE, a young Nazarene. That's right, right? Nazarene. Yes, Nazarene. That, that would be. Carpenter. Okay, Carpenter is having some trouble adjusting to the violent world around him and finding his place within it. He knows he's different, but he doesn't know why. Not yet, anyway. A bloody two-fisted tale of historical heroic fiction brought to you by Joe Casey and Benjamin Mara. I hated this book. Hmm. I concur. Which is so funny because I read it and I liked it. Did you really? I did. Wow. I'm with Katrina. I liked it. I wouldn't say I loved it, especially no. compared to the other two we read, which I absolutely loved. But I, I, I found there there was some humor and there were some elements. I think to if it, it would have been liked. pitched to me a little bit differently, I I would have been okay with. I it. Feel, I think you were incorrectly. Yeah, I thought it was going to be Bruce fucking Lee knocking people out. I and, thought yeah, I thought it was going to be like Kenshiro or like Kwai Chain Kane wandering the wilderness and, and just I having see adventures. Why you'd be disappointed? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I was were expecting. Yeah. I was, was mad at be. Robert. Yeah, that's what I expected. Even in that explanation, wouldn't that be what you expected? Yeah. He, I thought it was a really good interpretation because, you know, for my Catholic upbringing of going to Catholic yeah, school like for so long. Yeah, it was like Sunday school again. No, I hated that. it wasn't like that. It the was, Fist of Fury chapter was the only good chapter mm-hmm. in the whole thing. So that was the, is that the one with the, uh, the alligator thing? It might have been the one where the Roman soldiers are attacking him and he's he's doing his like hand motion super fast mm-hmm. again. Yeah. Well, that's when he's going to fight the serpent. Thing. I do. I, that was okay, but I did not like this book. I do not give it a B. I was it like, too story outliney? No, and because like, Jesus I felt the dialogue Freak, was Jesus not Freak. gripping at all. I found myself yeah. constantly. Uh, usually, when like I'm hooked into something, like I I ignore all distraction. I found myself being intentionally distracted by everything around me to avoid mm-hmm. reading this book. It took me so long to finish this book because I'd read a it, couple panels and I'd be like, <sighs> "Is it because it was so source material derived versus like?" A fun adaptation? I mean, no, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I, I mean, 
like most people, I've had a somewhat religious upbringing as well. So I, I, I was familiar with the story already. And I was just like, oh, okay, this... Okay, I feel like I'm in Sunday school and I'm reading... These are like the, the, the little... You remember the uh, little tiny comic strips you'd get that would like all like Jesusy like no, Bob's got an alcohol problem. Yeah, we didn't get that when oh, I was, where that I went to like school. A way more fun. Yeah, seriously. I <laughs> no, I mean the, the fun part was like you, know, you de- were going to go to hell, him, defacing him, and like making cool like right. comics. Is it like the Kung Fu out of Hustle comics. No, but I, I have to say what I really the positive thing about the book is I really did enjoy the artwork because the artwork reminded me of uh, like the old like Savage Sword of Conan like circa 1979 through 89. Mm-hmm. I like that he was not a perfectly uh, manicured, white, long-haired Jesus. He I like that. But his bangs, his bangs Jesus. suck. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure their but haircuts back then sucked. It's appropriate. Did they even have haircuts back then? Probably not. They were probably, I, I did like that he was, sword. what, culturally appropriate? Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah. Because he, in in the States here, we all we do is see, you know, Brown hair. White Jesus. White mm-hmm. Jesus. Six pound, eight ounce. Clean no, hair. Baby Jesus. Where's his white little I robe? I like the baby Jesus best. Oh, God. Gold <laughs> you say grace, you can worship any Jesus you want. Oh, God. He was a grown man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. He had a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, he didn't live to be an old man, but wouldn't old man Jesus be best? Shut up, Chip. <laughs> It's like it's like asking like what what I'll put you in your whole dusty ball. What area? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> we broke Robert. <laughs> your old dusty ball. <laughs> Oh God! It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Didn't you show well, it to yes, one of your he kids? He showed it to Parker. He's like, "Oh, I'm gonna show this to Parker." How did it's Parker handle that? I told him I was like, "You have to sit there and watch it with him and answer any questions he has because he is gonna have oh, a my lot." God. What questions did he have? I don't know. <laughs> oh come on, that's not fun. Oh. Uh, Woo. Anyways, sorry, that's gonna tap out these mics. Oh yeah, it is a lot. Um, no, I'm I- crying. I'm crying. <laughs> All right, to rein it back in, I think that um, I agree with Alan that the the artwork was really lovely and I enjoyed it, but I do think it was dialogue heavy and the dialogue was just archaic enough that it kind of got boring. And then they tried to insert these like pop culture references to Kung Fu films and sometimes it felt a little forced. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's pretty spot on. Yeah, I could. I can agree with that. I could sense that. Yeah, you 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 plucked the what was going on in my brain, and you. I, I wanted to like it more than I did. Like yeah. I wanted to like it. I did too. Because the concept I sounds spent really cool. Dollars on it. <laughs> the concept sounds really cool. It did. I was excited to read it. And yeah. I, I just thought it was really reflective of you know current events of where we're going on. That was one. Of Which the makes I me ask on. you: Would would uh, even if it is Jesus Christ, would uh, right wing America today? let him into this country no absolutely not yeah we're getting political well, no it will uh this brown jesus with black hold on, hair hold on hold on because it's about what country he's coming from well it's country a, of origin right so uh well the fact that they just made where, jerusalem where's the, nazareth where's nazareth at uh, that's in jordan right um i don't think jordan is on the list but also, I don't think Jesus would be alive today because he would be killed by the uh, Hezbollah, uh, any of the other Torah organizations. I can't think of their names right now. The Al Qaeda. It's in Israel. Boko Harama. I, f- I feel like uh, he'd get in because we're buddies with Israel. But I feel like uh, right now, and, and the PLO, yeah, and uh, Hamas. You've heard about the library in uh, which library in Canada? There's a no. library in Canada uh, that Canadian. is on the border of the U.S. and Canada, and there's one point in the library where the countries cross. So a lot of Muslim families are traveling to Canada to go see relatives that they haven't seen in years because they can't come to the U.S. Oh, that's kind of cool. It is cool wow. and sad. Mm-hmm. You're dead inside. Yeah. Alan just shrugged. Yeah, shrugged. I mean, it's a very nuanced problem with a very nuanced solution. Well, it's like the like people. Yeah. The example was that there's this medical student, and she's here in the states, and she knows that if she leaves and goes back home to see her family, she can't come back. Mm-hmm. So she has to make the decision to stay here and continue her studies, and you know, fulfill her degree, or yeah. risk not being able to do that. So I don't know. It. I find that sad. I didn't yeah. like this book. 
<laughs> <laughs> it was sold to me wrong. It was sold to you wrong. I agree. Um, what it, I meant it needed more Elvis. <laughs> Did we ever tell you about the play we saw at the Old Globe? Uh, it was a Steve Martin play. Oh, it was so oh, good. Uh, I wanted to see that uh, so badly. Van he's, he's Gogh, a good writer. Van Gogh meets Albert Einstein in a bar. No, but what's the punchline? At the very end, there's, there's Elvis. Line. At the very end, at the end, Elvis is a time traveler, and he comes and they they do a song. Nice. Now, which era of Elvis is it? Is it like, like cool, Vegas. like rockabilly, or is it like no, fat, it was sweaty jumpsuit? It was rockabilly. Oh. He was. Alan just loves that jumpsuit, Elvis. I do. Fat, sweaty, old Elvis is in the jumpsuit. Is you mean dying Elvis? Okay, here you want to hear my notes on this book? <laughs> yes. Uh, I already asked one of the questions. Uh, I like that Jesus looked culturally appropriate. Um, not what I thought it would be at all. John the Baptist looked exactly like one of the Bee Gees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it looked like Barry Gibb. That's it, one of my notes. Oh, my gosh. Totally. No, one of mine was money. Who has it and where it goes and not how it gets there? Because there was a big you know, turbulence between you know, the Jews not really caring about uh, Pontius Pilate coming in and mm-hmm. taking care of things because they were still making money. Mm-hmm. And that's very reflective of how we are today. Like We really don't care about who's in charge as long as we're making money. And who gives a shit about the people down there? Well, I know. My dad specifically said that he doesn't care who's the president or who's in power as long as his 401k is going up. Right. That's how a lot of people are. Yeah. And a lot, it, of, and a lot of people are just single issue voters. They don't, they don't care about anything else but what their one stance on this one issue. There's is. no global view. And that was like one of the things I saw here. It, it's really reflective of, you know, doing the right thing versus doing, you know, what's easy. Collective moral, I mean, it, moral it, it can be, but also I think that's just a, a reflection of just how mankind has been since the beginning of civilization as well. I think just as, as much as things have changed. Self-preserving. Yeah, as much as things change, things still say the same. It's interesting that all three of our books were about Jesus-themed, but they were all... Like totally took shots oh, totally at different, totally humorism different. and yeah. cool, ish, you know, it was like that cool thread too. Well, because that's what you know his teachings are supposedly about. You know, you're supposed to take care of people that can't take care of themselves, mm-hmm. but then these people turn around and you know don't well, enact sure, that. Sure. Right. So it's like how how Christian can you really say you are when you're well, not? That pract- was in Punk Rock Jesus, which right. is our next book we're going to talk about. That was in that as well. It's like. Yeah. I mean, we'll get to that, but the extreme Christians in that just showed how horrible they actually are. And I think, and I mean, that's extreme views of yeah, any, anything. Any, anything. Well, and the thing in this book was it's more or less about the government trying to seize control and doing whatever they possibly can to keep that control, even though they are the minority in actuality. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, and that's what was going on in Rome, right? Yeah, you know, Judea was just a Roman colony. Settlement. Yeah, settlement. Like, it, it wasn't anything you else build Pi- me shit pilot was just there to just keep keep the trains Status on time well. and i i know this uh, everything dealing with that part of the world has a very long complicated history i i mean it's no secret the jews have been persecuted for ever ever mm-hmm. a lot of it is started in the middle ages when when christianity came into play because one uh Jews practice usury, which is, uh, in, you know, in Christianity, is you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to lend money with interest. And Jews practice that. That's a lot of their businesses were money lending. And that led to a lot of, you know, the, the pogroms were really the one you hear about the most, like in Eastern and Northern Europe, uh, where they were picked on and well, killed and burned and whole, ostracized and shit like that. The point of ideology is that there is one true religion. And if you are practicing a different religion, you can't be right. Well, look at look at look at look at what uh, how many global conflicts or border conflicts are are simply because of that. I mean, or even not even based on religion, but because we're all a group of a one religion and you are not right. It, we we're not even fighting ideologically, but now our you know, borders. Where you look at like India and Pakistan, when Britain left, they split up India and they made Pakistan okay. This is where most of the Islamic Indians are, we'll make you guys a country, and then, you know, India, and then Bangladesh. Uh, and ever since Britain left there, I mean, India and Pakistan have been at each other's throats, and at one point in the early 2000s, they both had nuclear weapons, and they both had their fingers on the button ready to... And it's like that again. Fun. Are you religious? 
<laughs> is that a real question we read three religious books today that are based on it in one way or another so i just figured to ask you oh no no not not at all katrina no do you want to answer i'm pretty agnostic i'm a, i'm part. in that same boat i i can't like i can't say i'm atheist because the true definition of atheism is you know for sure that there's no god and i can't say that i've just i feel like i i have very little faith. But I'm almost, I, I can almost, tell the moment that I, my, I lost my faith. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you know what it, like, do you want to talk about it? Um, it was our senior mass at the cathedral in Sacramento. And I was, a, you know, I was sitting there in the pew and I'm looking around and there's this lady basically screaming out these hymns. And I'm just like, what are you doing that for? I was like, who are you expecting to look at you at how loud you are? And it's just kind of when I, because I'd already stopped taking the Eucharist at Mass, because we had Mass in our gym, because we didn't have a chapel big enough for all the student body. Um, So I had slowly stopped doing that. And then at that moment, I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I was like, I can't keep putting my time somewhere in my mental space where I don't believe. I I went to a Lutheran church starting in fourth grade fourth grade fifth grade sixth grade i graduated catechism class i was an altar boy uh i served communion i did all that and i prayed almost every night until i was 18 19 and like you i wouldn't consider myself an atheist but uh i don't really have any any faith i mean i i i I, I guess I could think there's a possibility that maybe, but I, I don't really believe in anything. I think I'm on the agnostic. Watching my stepmom watch my dad die, I have a hard time believing that there's some higher power that can watch that kind of suffering. Yeah, it, it, it's that the whole God has a plan adds, thing. I don't. That's that's garbage. I I believe that you're meant to live your life and make your decisions now because that's what's important. I also think any God that like. My my philosophy is I'm going to live my life the best I can be. I'm going to try to be nice to everybody that deserves it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to you know I'm going to be an asshole when I need to be. And I have a hard time feeling that any any god that would just damn you to hell for even that. for trying to be the best you can be isn't something I could believe in. Mm-hmm. I've never really had this conversation out loud, but yeah, eh. but it's appropriate. I so. Uh, my dad was Mormon. My mom was Pentecostal. So that's a mixture. <laughs> oh yeah. Did she convert to get married or uh, did he just not care? Yeah. She converted. And then when they divorced, it, it, yeah. she went back. Okay. To, well, th- she was like, whatever they call like non-denominated, just like generic vanilla Christian. But then for a while after they divorced, she was really into like being Pentecostal and the exact Is moment. that the tongues? Yeah. Did you ever go into? I could see you just messing with that. No, no. I, <laughs> He's like, I did he not, not mess with that. Inside. No, <laughs> no. The the exact oh, moment I, I lost something. my faith, I was ten years old. Uh, I I just had to come back from church because it was a weekend with my mother that weekend, and uh, they were doing like Bible Jeopardy in like Sunday what? school. I did that. And it was like Bible quote Jeopardy, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't know any Bible quotes, so like. Every time I get picked on, I was like, uh, Jesus wept. That's the only one I can remember. Uh, Jesus wept. And I had like, the, oh, I was the only one with like no score. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> these, these dorks are like trying to, trying to make fun of me, make me feel bad. And I'm just like looking at him like, Jesus bullies. I was like, yeah. Assholes. All right. Thanks. Dorks. Like, better luck next time there. I was in, uh, I was in high school in, a. Uh, I wasn't getting up for, I was probably a freshman. I wasn't getting up for church and my grandma was all mad at me. She's like, fine, you can't go anymore. And I never went again. Mm-hmm. That was the last time I went to it's church. Like, it's like when Homer stopped going to church. It's just great. <laughs> you know, my godfather was a Baptist yes, I pastor. Do. Yeah, yeah, that was, he, he was great. My, uh, I am a reverend for the Universal Life Church, however. Nice. And I have officiated several weddings. <laughs> nice, it's true. <laughs> I am my, ordained. <laughs> my pastor died of uh, Kreutzfeldt Jacobs disease. Kreutzfeldt Jakob? Yeah, that's gnarly. Yeah, I mean, they, they always said, you know, when the mad cow thing was out, they said, you'll never know somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that died of... Robert does. I was like, I know somebody that died. It's just like his grandma knows how any, knows somebody who's died any which way. I wasn't allowed to do anything fun when I was a kid because <laughs> I was like, 
You can't swim in the rock quarry, Parker. We are Parker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't swim in the rock quarry, Robert. We know somebody that died in there. You can't ride those quads, Robert. We know somebody that died that way. I'm like, you really need to watch the Bubble Goldbergs. Boys. What's funny is my uncle and I got drunk because we will hang out occasionally, and he's like, I had like because I was treated like a kid because I was raised by my grandparents who raised my uncle, and he's like, you don't even know how it was. I was the first one that had to go through that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think we can move on to the uh, the uh, last book. We or do you guys want to? I'll pour another cider before we talk to the next about the next one. You yeah, want to go get the next one? Yeah, I'll do what another one. What else do I have here? Um, I think I went over everything. And you can tell by the way I walk. There's a beautiful short story by um, Langston Hughes called Salvation, and the story is about him um, going to church, and his and he, everyone expects him to get up on stage and like feel the Lord in him, and he sees all the people like, you know, go oh, embracing, and, yeah. and he and he wants so badly to feel it, but he never does, does. and he Could finally just fakes it honest. so he can like sit down, and I feel like you know. It's representative of a lot of the way people feel where they, they want so badly to believe, but they Don't. maybe haven't had an experience that other people claim to have. See, right? we were like holiday Catholics is what yeah. I called it. Like we would go on. You only go on the big days. It was Christmas Eve and it was Easter. Mm -hmm. And that's when we would I go to church. I hated those people because I went every Sunday and every Wednesday. See, it wasn't my fault. That's when my dad would actually go. And with my school, I've talked about it before, is you would pay alms. Mm -hmm. And our Catholic school would give discounts to parents who paid a certain amount in alms. But I figured out, well, if you're paying money on Sunday, doesn't it end up equaling the same amount Being of money? Yeah. Way. yeah. So I'm like, that's kind of stupid. So I, that kind of made sense why my parents didn't go to church on Sundays. But we went know. every Sunday for a few years and I was also raised Lutheran. And then I was also like you in high school. I just didn't want to go anymore my parents didn't press it and we just stopped going so the next cider is a dry apple yeah serpentine cider 7.7 .7 abv oh, i guess i should your, read the synopsis on the last book well i was gonna say your your story reminded me of a short story uh about a lady who uh goes to church one morning and uh realizes that everybody in there is dead and it's the Church of the Dead. She went too early at church. It was a scary story to tell in the dark. Too early. Yes. So don't go to church at night, apparently. It's when the dead hold mass. What's our next book, Robert? Uh, I'm, I'm getting to the window. Give me one second. To the window. Punk the Rock wall. Jesus. By Sean Murphy. I don't even have to say the artist or writer because he did everything. He did. How long did it take him? I don't know. In 2019, an, enter in, in 2019, an entertainment company named... Uh, That's now. Ophis? Ophis. Starts what is known as the J2 Project, a plan to resurrect Jesus Christ. A clone of Jesus Christ is made with DNA from the Shroud of Turin. The young Jesus is raised on an island with his entire life dictated and televised and viewed by nearly the entire world. Faced with these stresses, the young Jesus ultimately becomes a rebellious punk rocker. Religious zealots either love or hate the show, and politicians begin to fret over the potential influences on the nation. The scientific community fears the implications of the cloning itself. Uh, dun, dun, dun! The Truman Show about Jesus, basically. Correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct, sir. This book was excellent. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And Matt, so. Sir Matt Dumford was the one that mentioned this. And I said, oh, it sounds like something that Alan would read. And you're like, I've already read it. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what you read. <laughs> I will uh, tell you everything I read from now on. I expect an update. How do you like the cider? Let me uh, give it a little taste. Yeah, we should taste about it. Talk we should taste about that. Taste mm -hmm. about it. We talked about the blood orange. I figured, that's how you make a cider. I figured this one would be your favorite. Yes. It's this their one? original. Like, yes, that's we got this one specifically for you. I yes. appreciate it. I will enjoy this it is it is it is dry it does have a bite it's delicious gabs you're right by the chutzpah it's pleasant however i do like yeah. the apricot one the best so far as far as what i could drink regularly this is a palate cleanser your face palate cleanser palate number cleanser. two well <laughs> it's vomit when i see it yeah no that's not how a palate cleanser works <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, punk rock Jesus. Serpentine cider. Dry apple. It's delicious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blessed by our Lord and Savior, your Optimus Prime. <laughs> that caught me so off guard today. I was like, is Alan talking about to my kids about Jesus? Because it got all quiet all of a sudden. All you heard was... Because Robert you know, was listening. Sins, right? <laughs> well, what I do is like, I've, I've, I've done my best as a dad, and I think as parents to block everything out that i can and let the boys make the decisions for themselves because parker believes yeah and obviously katrina doesn't and i'm a well, I, non-religious well, i told you about my mom thinking that my house is haunted yes and you play that, D&D? and that i bring demonic presence into the world because i play D yes. at that house god the controlling of board games but i really damage want, they can do you know she keeps a crucifix hanging on one of my pictures because of all the the evil demonic shit i do that brings evil spirits with me is it a magical crucifix Where's no it from? It's, it's just a regular one she got from some christian store oh, okay it's made out of garlic has she had it blessed yet no but my hands are blessed I don't know if I told you guys this, you did. but you some can talk nuns about here. blessed my hands during Nurses Week at one of the Catholic hospitals I work. So you should call her and tell her that you're, cur- you're cured. Do you think about that when you masturbate? Not at all. Oh. That, it basically, it makes Bless it holier. Bless dick. <laughs> it doesn't need to be blessed any further. It's already immaculate. It's well blessed. It's perfect. That's not what I've heard. Oh. Ooh. Things have been hanging out in the shade for too long. Oh. Well, you know, I'm a pasty guy, so that's all right. Jesus. But. What's the scientific... Uh, uh, oh. phenomenon that your penis is always like it's always a different shade than the rest of your body <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't wait what i think it might be called dixie wrecked <laughs> no like if you if if you've watched as much porn as i have or or the experience with my own penis it's it's not the same shade as the rest of your, well i guess your different parts of your body are different different shades. parts, well, just different think about parts your of skin feet. different like, melon account yeah. how many different tans do you have on your feet sandal sock <laughs> Yeah, well, what about there the you go. dick, apparently? What about the plantar surface of your feet? <laughs> yeah. Or it's all sweaty. What is the average size penis? It's five and a half? 5.56, yeah. <laughs> I looked it up at one point, and it said if you had a seven-inch penis, you have a bigger penis than 91% of the American population. That's yeah, how the bell curve works, yeah. They never told us how big the Pope's was. No, no. they didn't. <laughs> Before or after. I, it sounded like big. John Holmes. <laughs> yeah. John Holmes. I don't know what that means. So John Holmes is a porn star <laughs> in the seventies, and he was uh, known for having a schlong that was fourteen inches. Oh God! Yeah, I Ouch. saw. I saw. You know the Ouchie. sex museum <laughs> in Russia. The sex museum. You say ouch. She said ouchie. ouchie. She said ouchie because I, I, we were talking when you were in the other room about how they say ow and ouchie in Battle Pope, like when they're getting hurt. Okay. Yeah. You know the sex museum in Russia has uh, Rasputin's penis in a jar. I saw Ron Jeremy Why? at the Marriott Marquis. So he he was uh, apparently like, you know, because one, he was Rasputin. You know, we all okay. know the legend of how, like, it took a million different ways to kill him. So they just decided to keep his penis in a well, jar. Well, apparently, well, his penis is giant. It's like... Currently, well, if you put anything in liquid, it'll look giant. Well, no. So it it it, it, That's why I it was seventeen in inches liquid. before they put it in there. Now it's like over eight, like eighteen after being like pickled in formaldehyde for almost a hundred years. What does a pickled penis taste? Like? Oh god! I have no idea, but I, did, I bet you that one tastes like formaldehyde. <laughs> oh, but th- th- that tastes what, like cancer. They're assuming that uh, that's probably the influence that he had over the royal family as he was having an affair with the Tsarina, and that might be why. Because he's hung like a horse, so to speak. I saw Ron Jeremy at the Marriott, and he was in Crocs and stained sweatpants and a t-shirt tucked into the sweatpants. He very flattering. That sounds about... Yeah. Oh, Anyways, Punk course. Rock Jesus by Sean Murphy. Uh, Where they don't really talk about penis I think the all. cemetery no. might be one of... Was that a cemetery? That was his nickname in the Might IRA. be the best yes. fucking nickname ever. Why was he called the cemetery, Robert? Because all the people he killed, he and had he the crosses, crosses tattooed on his back. Yeah, cross for every victim he that killed. That dude was, what, Mikhail? What was his first name? Thomas. Thomas Mikhail. That guy was badass. He was a badass. That's one of the badassest of badass. Yes, it is. Comic. Obviously, he is easily Title of the likable character in that. Which is funny, because he was a terrorist. I mean... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the most likable character in the IRA. Not whiny whiny Jesus. Yeah, and that's one thing. Yeah, we we weren't um we didn't have to deal with that in the eighties and nineties. all that domestic terrorism happened in our front door like that. It was must have been a hell of a time to live across the pond. No yeah. thank you. Yeah, before the truce. Yeah, that, that shit was probably fucking crazy. Um any of our uh, people across the pond do have lived it, tweet at us. Yeah, let me know. That'd be interesting to get that perspective. Um 
this this book is really I mean, when you and Matt talked about it on the the last one. Yeah. There's really nothing quite like this. This is a hundred percent original. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, really cool. Did you read the the thing from Sean Murphy at the end? I didn't. I did not. It I talks barely about, finished on deadline. It talks about him being religious and him uh not really having faith anymore and uh going surfing with one of his buddies and he he wanted he was going to decide f- he was going to be an atheist for a month to see how it felt how it felt and he had a surfing accident where he was underwater and he was going to pray while he was underwater but he decided he's like I said I was going to be an atheist and I'm not going to pray so he got himself out of the situation he says I it, it, this I'm summarizing obviously but he said that uh he knows that if he would have prayed and he would have survived he would have been uh thankful to God so he didn't pray, and when he saved himself, he decided that he was an atheist, which I always thought was an interesting story. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, that's a summary, and I might have left a lot of details out, but uh, you mm. know, this book's called Punk Rock Jesus, but it took quite a while to, to see get to Punk Rock Jesus. Punk Rock Jesus. Well, I think you needed to see the, the development. Evolution. Yeah. Um, but yes. I was constantly wondering, where is Punk Rock Jesus? Well, where you kind of see it. Pep- you kind of see it peppered in there, like when uh, Chris is raiding. Uh, Thomas's record collection and, and steals yeah. a, a stiff little but fingers album. But it takes a while to get, get there. there. Yeah, it's subtle. Like even the scientist, she's got. At one point, I noticed she's wearing, she's wearing a dead, dead Kennedy, Kennedy shirt. shirt. Yeah, and it's sort of like she's one of the outliers, the people who are like you know trying to fight the system in this small way. Right. I thought it was really cool that like punk rock was totally dead. There's mm-hmm. one band in existence, yeah. mm-hmm. and that was it. So, um, Slate, that was his name, right? Yes, Slate. Yes. The guy that plays uh, Commissioner Gordon's Rise of the Dark Knight, you see, you saw Rise of the Dark Knight. Okay, yeah. Uh, the guy that plays his like partner that he go into, and he's yep. like, "Hey, that's immediately who I thought of as I was okay. reading this." I don't I know. I just I penciled that face in my mind to that very okay. skin, that. skinny, tall guy. Kind it's of. The, it's the guy from Stranger Things, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. With the white hair. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh. I you feel bad you feel so bad for this kid not just the kid but his mom mm-hmm. like she's put in this situation where you know she's been fed a bunch of information that's not true mm-hmm. it's almost like like it's almost like a it's brainwashing Britney Spears you get you know you're you're instantaneously famous you're taking, obviously she's a mouse you're taking a but, child and stripping away everything mm-hmm. yeah. and creating something else yeah. She's and tra- 18 and she's basically secluded to this island with this kid and like doesn't have any friends can't see her parents. Yeah. Um, well, and then when they break out to go to her family home, it's... They're gone. They're gone. Well, can you imagine, like, the turmoil that they would have gone through? And she probably, you know, wasn't thinking about I that. I mean, if you're looking at... This took place in 2019, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you think of how things are today, I mean, things are so extreme. Each And that's left, right, whatever you want to say. The the viewpoint is these these people. You know, you, you you dig your heels in, and I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. You're wrong. I can't open my mind to any you other possibility. Yeah, you can't think about uh, anything else possibly being. It's right. called lack of empathy. So I mean, in this, you see that you see the NAC being this these religious extremists, and um, I like the science dude with the beard. Who's just like, no, this is bullshit, basically, every time they try to say anything. The black guy? No, I like that guy as well, but I'm talking about the guy they had as the consultant on the news. He had oh, like a okay. beard and yes. glasses. Yes. He wasn't in it very much. No, he wasn't. But uh, I, I like Where's him. the empirical evidence? Where is the... Yes. 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 Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? He's where, the grounder. Where Bring everybody back down to ground. Is it, and that's how I feel like I am. I mean, I'm a pretty fucking liberal dude, and we got crazy Ron Swanson over here. Uh, but I also libertarians like, unite. I also like to think of myself as a uh, yes. As I'm not the kind of person that's going to say uh, like okay. So Donald Trump had the famous grab him by the pussy line, and and people are like, well, Joe Biden this and Al Franken this, and I'm like, well, get them the fuck out of here too. Mm-hmm. It's not. I don't want any of you here. You know what I mean? It's 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 not just Republican or I'm really going down this line now. Yeah, you are. And Democrat, but I just I want all the shitty people out of politics, mm-hmm. which is never going to happen because they're all no. shitty. But uh, I I don't know. It's just I, I feel like uh, uh, we're years and years and years away from that because the states on the East Coast and in the Bible Belt 
are so far behind other progressive states. Yeah, it's frustrating. We do live in a, a nice bubble here in California. Yes, we do. We it's, live in a really big bubble. And we're shielded by a lot of a lot of stuff. You know, we have a lot of women in charge. That's obviously reflected in our Senate seats. Ew. What? Senate? Nothing. I'm just saying this while looking for a quote. Okay. Um, but uh, to backtrack a little bit, uh, this was a, an extremely original idea. Idea. I really, it, it was a long read. I didn't realize it was going to be as long as it was. Me either. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it was worth every. Oh, absolutely. Every page. It was. I felt like the third act. I guess I would say, you know, towards the end, drug a little bit. Uh, no, I, I think the punk rock portion was a lot shorter than him being younger. Yeah. I mean, you had to get there. You had to build up to that. Right. And uh, I, I have a hard time thinking of a fourteen or fifteen year old kid as you know, this paving the way for well, a I band. Guess Justin Bieber, uh, esque. Other Jonas side Brothers. of the coin, but it's just it's like well, no people listening to them, not listening to their music, but listening to their message. It's like you're 14 or 15 years old. Yeah, he had an IQ of 185, but uh, I don't know. And who was he a clone of? That's Did the question. They, somebody smart. Does it matter? I I, I I think I I think that's what it comes down to is does it matter? No. And. So he's just randomly well, we all that know smart. It's well, 50 percent genetics and environment. Absolutely, but I think also it's a good. Even if Christianity wasn't an established religion, it's a very good example of how easy it is to establish a religion and how easy it is to get followers on one side of the line or the other. I mean, look at. Uh, we talk about the knack and how they're constantly trying to shut this down, but look at the people that consumed it and watched it like it was really like all the fans, mm-hmm. the rabid fans that were like watching the reality show and like consuming that almost as if it was a religious experience itself. I don't know why I instantly thought, have you ever seen blast from the past? <laughs> a long time ago in the yes, that is the exact moment that uh, my roommate and I have uh, pinpointed that that's when Christopher Walken started phoning it in. Yeah, I could see that. What? But uh, no, well, like he he re- he doesn't memorize lines anymore. He just reads straightly from a teleprompter or any kind of thing. He just like phones in all of. I his... don't think so. Like, I don't know. I think that might be the. We watched the... that movie not too long Seven ago. Seven Psychopaths. Yeah. Oh. Have you ever seen that? Great movie. Yeah, it's a really good movie. And that was kind of newer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of a lot of stuff that the he cash just... grabs. You probably. Hey just... man, yeah. he you needs ever to seen, make uh, some money too. Okay? You ever seen Pool Hall Junkies? Yeah, that's a good movie. Solid movie. Yeah. Uh, no, but I, give, I give that an actual B. So Brendan Fraser comes out of the uh, the ground, and then there's that guy with the big forehead. Fraser, Fraser, sorry, that starts like worshiping him, and he, and he has up ends up having like a religion that follows him from the people that come under the ground. No, nobody. Yes, right, right. I know exactly what you're talking about. I hate you all. When I think okay, of him, I just think of Encino Man and my girl crush that I had on him. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think I really like the Mummy, but. I have a soft spot for that, but I think Airheads would be my favorite Brendan Fraser movie. Only that one? Not Looney Tunes Back in Action? <laughs> That's actually supposed to be a good movie. I think I watched it. Anyways, like Punk Rock Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he was good on scripts. He died. It was so I sad. Know. And he was only in two episodes, and yet you felt like you really didn't want him to leave the show. Why is you adjusting your headset affect mine? I don't know. Did you hear? Like, I couldn't hear Sarah for a second, then all of a sudden it I couldn't in. either, and that's why I had to turn it. Sorry. Um, but this is your second time reading the book, Alan? That is correct, yes. What and did you see this time that you didn't see the first time? Uh, it has been so long since I've read this that I was telling Robert, it's been like reading it for the first time for me. Okay, fair enough. The that, book came out in 2013. Yeah, it, um, I think mostly I focused on a lot of the more of the punk rock aesthetics then. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- this time, because I knew I was reading it for the uh, you know a book club that I wanted to read it like with a lot more depth and really disseminate it and pick it apart. I thought it was really cool that they saved the other baby. Mm-hmm. I they didn't see that coming. Yeah. I didn't see that coming either. Cause you just see the scientist in the car looking horrified at what happens. But right. You never I, think there's time for her to do anything about it. Right. And I, I think the third act is when a lot of the most like memorable quotes come out or are out of the third line. Like there's uh so I, I made notes on the different panels. Uh, 
this is when uh, Chris is on the uh, on the news and they're talking about uh, you know that Rebecca's his twin sister mm-hmm. and they're talking about her kind of take on religion and why why things are that and he says uh, you know we don't have to coddle idiots like Daisy Milton their religious freedom is impending any progress and I I think that's a, 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 it brings up a very good question as to whether or not does the freedom to practice religion uh, at what point do you impede on that freedom to push for progress yeah, well, I don't and, think and, you, and how important is progress? I don't think there is a freedom of religion. And there's no right or wrong answer to that. I think that's probably the biggest... Me, is what I just said? Yeah. I don't think there's a freedom of religion. I think you're free to be Christian. I think if you're any other religion, you're you're looked at as almost a pariah. Like, you're okay. just... Well, I mean... I I heard that differently. You're, you're looked... Well, sure, you're going to... Socially, you're going to be differently, but that could be said of any any place. You, you go somewhere in the Middle East, you're going to be a social pariah. So it's you have the freedom to worship without any governmental laws coming in and and, and striking you down, and at what you know the, fundamentally a lot of our issues are you know big on church and state right. Uh, what are the biggest hotly debated topics going on right now? Abortion. Abortion, and what's fundamentally at the bottom of that? Religion. Right it is the freedom to practice religion versus progress well i know that a lot of places want to put religion in schools and i'm sad i pull i'd pull my kids out of school i know it'd be difficult but i don't want them teach a religion i want them to discover or denounce that on their own mm-hmm. that's not okay with me and i will be at every pta meeting and i'll be at every school board meeting and i will be at every single meeting to, i don't think it's going to happen like we said we live in california right things are a little different here well it's well done being alan a part of a religion requires participation like you have to participate and you have to show up and you have to be present. And I don't think a child is capable of making that decision. No, but believing in God and belie- being religious are actually two different things. Absolutely. No, a lot of people say, like, I'm spiritual, not religious. Having faith in something is, there's nothing wrong with inherently having faith. I think it's it's good for the general psych, you know, psychological well-being of people having some kind of p- faith in something. Uh whether you're superstitious or you know something as simple as knocking on wood, you know even even the most atheistic Licking people have, have some kind of. When I think I'm going to jinx myself with baseball, I will knock on my head and wipe off what I just said from my tongue to make sure that I. Uh, yeah. Every time we all we all have stupid rituals. Yeah, we all we all. I do knock it. on wood. That's like my main one. I do do that all the time. Uh, in my profession, uh, saying the words "quiet" or "slow" is a bad omen. What? Yeah, you never say it's a slow night or a quiet night because that means the shit's going to go. Oh. Down. But I also don't believe in that, so I, I like to mess with my coworkers and I'll throw the Q bomb around. It's like, oh, often. we haven't got any claims today. <laughs> like, hey, guess what? Quiet, quiet, quiet. And I'll say that right when I'm clocking out and be like, see ya. See ya. <laughs> you would. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I'll see you later. Let uh, me know how it goes. But there, there's some other really good. Um, there are some that just have very little dialogue in them, but they're just mm-hmm. really powerful images, like the one where it's mm-hmm. uh, Chris, yeah. Rebecca, holding the kids, holding Tommy, and Tommy, you know, just saying "I love you," and they're just having this like moment, tender moment, because they're worried that they're all going to die. Yeah. And after the helicopter wreckage, all the the cross mm-hmm. from the uh, the helicopter rotors, mm-hmm. right? Uh, very symbolic of crucifixion of poor young Chris here. Yep. But there's another really good quote here by Chris when uh, – let me pull it up here one second. Um, I got – there's so many good ones. There's mm-hmm. – when the Knack are rushing up and uh, Tommy is uh, basically running interference mm-hmm. and the Daisy, the head of the Knack, says, uh, you're the – you know, too bad you're the wrong kind of Christian – you know, kind of referencing because he's you know staunch Catholic IRA, and that, and even even within Christianity there is you know divisions of the sect. I mean, you guys were raised Lutheran. Is wasn't Lutheranism Martin Luther's nailing the things on the door saying like this is my problem with Catholicism yes. and mm-hmm. and taking off. I mean, there's definitely schisms within Christianity mm-hmm. as well. And the same can be said. I mean, there's how many different types of Judaism, how many types of Islam. 
the Protestant versus Catholic thing. Oh, absolutely. Like, based absolutely. on the whole idea of belief in transubstantiation. Sure. Yeah. That's it. Um, there was another one here where... Hang on. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't save, so I have to pull the panel up. But... Real quick, I'm going to go get the last cider we oh, need yeah. to try before. Yay. Yes, please. It's my favorite. Oh, this is your favorite? Yeah. Cool. I've really liked them all so far, honestly. All three have been delicious. The food in the place is really good, too. Have you ever been to um, Cider Works, that place in North Park? It's like a cider bar. Um, is that what Boviac? it's called? Bo- 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 I don't know how to yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> no, we've been there. Um, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, there was an interesting band that was playing when we were there. Yeah, that was a little strange. It was a little strange. I just um, like that I could get a flight, you know, and yeah. try the little the right. fun. And that's what at Serpentine they have flights. Mm-hmm. They have three, four, and five taster flights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can, and they change out their menus based on the season. Yeah. So you can, I Very think cool. we tried all of the ones that they had available. Alan? Thank you. Oh, you're not finished yet. No, he's not finished. He's looking for his notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm kind of slowing this down, but there are some really. Really, really well, good stuff. Well, it's a long text, here. so it's hard. I, I took some screenshots, but sometimes it's hard to go back and find it what is. you're talking about because it is very... Um, Where on the timeline are you looking? Uh, it It's shortly... It, it, this, all this stuff is t- tail end. Here, thank you. I'll okay. grab it in a second. Um, here, I got it right here. So, just for the record, this uh, last Serpentine Cider is a blackberry raspberry. Yeah. Very good. Very good. This might be my favorite of all of them, too. It is really sure. good. Uh, this is... So, right after they're in uh, Jerusalem, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, so... so the, Pissing this, off all the sex. This big badass former IRA turned uh, British spe- you know, special sur- anti-terrorism unit badass named, you know, Thomas the Cemetery... He, the cemetery, who has been using nothing but rubber bullets this entire time because the Virgin Mary has appeared to him in the form of Chris's mom. That oh, okay, Gwen. That he can avoid hell if he stops killing. Mm-hmm. Not and really at one point, there's a dude shouts something in Arabic. He shouts something back in Arabic, and I like how the the bubble is just Arabic text, so you don't yeah. know what what's exchanged between the two. Mm-hmm. And he murks the entire fucking group of them i really like that he has that kind of crisis conversation with he grabs him and says tell me i'm not going to hell yeah. tell me i'm doing this for the right reasons he's been like a tell me you're real he's been this just stoic person this entire time and then he just starts breaking down and crying well i think that's very you know conducive of a lot of people's journeys with religion is that there comes a point where you start to ask you know am i really doing this for the right reason? am i doing the right thing yeah it, it, not only that but it Chris comes back and says, you know, that that wasn't my mom you were seeing. And, and definitely there was more going on between Gwen and Thomas. And I don't think he admitted to himself that I, he was falling for her as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Right. And he was really torn up about her death. But there's this one scene at the end where Thomas says he's going to hold them all off. You guys go. Mm-hmm. And it, it's finally Chris comes down to, and admits that I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm just another dumb, stupid teenager. And I'm not worth this sacrifice. Because it really... All this was this whole punk rock Jesus thing was just teenage rebellion. Yeah, at, at, like at at the very sum, and that's he's trying to find a purpose. There is, and that's coming back. I think that's what makes that's what's important to punk rock. And I don't know about you guys, but when I started getting into that, it was at that phase of my life where oh, what am I doing? What this am- rebellion gave me purpose, and I found people that were the same. And it, it, you became whenever a you find a com- whenever you become a car- part of any community where you're kind of right. like already the outsider and it, it being accepted and it's a big deal yeah absolutely and then just him coming to the realization that he's just a dumb kid mm-hmm. and he doesn't know anything about the world uh it's a great moment mm-hmm. yeah that's that, probably I mean, one of my favorite lines in this yeah. book it really it really capped everything off yeah. um have you ever seen uh private parts <laughs> um, not many, many so times. Many private parts, but Howard is, Stern's yes. private parts. <laughs> the movie based on the book. Not have you his ever actual seen? Junk. Do you remember the point in that movie where I'm trying to be really serious? The uh, he's he, trying. He's 
the the program director told him he had to say the time a certain amount of time. The pig mama guy, right? No, this is before that when he was first okay. getting and when he was starting to be himself. Before WNBC, he, he was talking about his mom dying, and he's like, "Oh," and and then he would say the weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I felt like. You're saying something serious, and I'm here to say the weather. <laughs> How's your cider? <laughs> Raspberry Blackberry, everybody. It's a raspberry blackberry. Yes, yes. This is the last one we're trying tonight. It's my favorite. For sure. It is not overly barely like you, I yeah. would expect. Yeah, it's because like, they don't use artificial stuff in it. And that's there's why there's no extra sugars and tastes kind of like a tea. I'm, this is my new favorite alcoholic cider tea. company. Like I, that is my issue with cider is there's only usually so much I can drink. Yeah, usually when I go to the store, else, I go like Magners is the only one I I like. So as a as a not a big cider fan, what do you think of Serpentine so far? Uh, I'm a fan. Yeah, I, I um when I'm in the Marilani district on a gadabout, I will what do they call it? A gadabout every Saturday. Walkabout. Walkabout. Last well, Saturday of the month. Well, they'll have a theme. We have four bottles of mead for Game you, of Thrones tomorrow. You do yes. like walking, so next time you want to go walk. Apparently I'm the fucking walker. <laughs> well you've got a Fitbit, so I like to walk. Ha- haven't you watched Clerks Two where they, they you love Lord of the Rings yes, and that's they all three of those walking. movies are just walking. <laughs> yeah. In fact, here's my impression. Three goddamn movies of uh, walking. <laughs> we are going to have to wrap up soon. Sam Bricks and Frodo's so, mouth. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. What's we a, are going to have to wrap up what's soon. What's a cock stain? <laughs> Pillow pants? <laughs> what about Lister feet? <laughs> <laughs> that's her mouth troll. You love Randall. I do love Randall. You know, he's not, you, so you know they're replacing him with a red box. Yes. Because because he, he doesn't want to play, he wouldn't do it. Yeah, but I, I think the fucking I, tile company. I think that's great though. They're just replacing it with a red box. Are good. they going to label it Randall? No. So and have guess, it abbreviated. I guess Kevin Smith has been tweeting that like if Red Box wants to like oh I saw be that. okay with that yeah please like otherwise they're going to have to come up with some clever name. <laughs> we saw the heat he was getting too with this uh, with the, with the, one of the criminals is uh, you know Arabic. And everyone's like, oh, I'm tired of all this forced diversity. And he's like, her name is Jihad for crying out loud. I, uh, who is it? One of them. One of them's played by his daughter. Okay. It, I, did you ever see Cockblockers with John Cena and Leslie Mann? It's like a coming of age. Like these girls are going to have sex on their prom night. No, but I'm sure Matt probably has. One of them was uh, a... Uh, it's got wrestling in it. She has... <laughs> she's Middle Eastern yeah. descent. And she is fucking awesome. Like I could see her being hilarious. The next, like really, really. She's funny in Miracle girl Workers. She is hilarious. It's it's the timing. It's the it's the yeah. it's it's the. Uh, it's just honest. Yeah, she was just so fucking great. She's a tomboy sports. And anytime there's like a girl in the movie that talks like a dude when she's just like, yeah, I'm Whatever. gonna let this dude fuck me in my pussy. I'm just like, all okay. right, I like that chick. <laughs> True. <laughs> she's just like. Whatever. Just honest, you know what I mean? Yeah. I liked it. Um yeah. Punk Rock Jesus, Sarah, you have anything about Punk Rock I, Jesus? I just think I think Alan did a really good job of wrapping up like the poignancy of Chris's character, but for me uh, to add to that, I think Chris was the red herring and really Tom was the true Absolutely. hero. He was the, the story, true the protagonist. He was such a badass and yeah. such a likable character and I just But he really had the most loved... development too. Yeah. It was a really, really good story arc. It was very subtle development. And I I, I didn't want to hit all all the major notes cuz I really want you guys to read this. Matt Matt Dunford is right like this is an excellent book. Absolutely do yourself a favor and yep. read this. I know we haven't really said whether or not you should read these and with the exception of the one book I didn't like, I've liked everything on mm-hmm. here, but if out of the six graphic novels we read, if you had to read one bullet to your head, this is the gun. This is the one I put a gun to your head and make you read. Absolutely. I concur. It will take you some time, mm-hmm. but it is totally worth yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree hundred percent. I give you this will a, not knock it out in half an hour. I, trust I, me. I will say that this is a solid a plus. Yep. I agree. Loved it. You see that Robert? I a like plus? something else. Yeah. Robert, gi- Robert it. gives it a B. I really enjoyed it. Um, I li- I do like how you don't realize that uh, Chris isn't really he isn't really the main character mm-hmm. of the book. It it is with Thomas is that was the name is yeah. yes yeah. the cemetery the cemetery the cemetery. Uh, I mean he really is the biggest change in the whole book and and I really liked that a lot and I I enjoyed the book a lot. I thought it was completely original and I I would give it an A. But I don't if we're going from A's to number scores, I reserve perfect tens for something that kind of 
catches me so off guard that I'm like, what the fuck did I just read? Well, I believe a perfect 10 doesn't exist, so... I, yeah. oh, I'm I'm pretty much perfectionist. The, I'm pretty yeah. much I'm close to that. Yeah, I'm close to that. Um, I'm hoping Endgame is that. Uh, Fingers in, crossed. Infinity War was pretty damn good. Nine 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 point seven nine point eight. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, I I I I'm trying a, to th- solid A plus effort. I'm trying to think about. I'm trying to rack my brain right now, but what I would give a ten to. Uh, probably Suicide Squad, the movie. That, yeah, <laughs> uh, that sounds about right. Uh, Even though you gave it a B. Oh. I'm trying to think, man. What was the last T-shirt time? T-shirt design coming soon. Are you talking soon? like movies or just anything? Anything. When was the last time I was like, whoa. I was blown away when I wrote, read John Extremity. Wick. He hates Extremity. I didn't hate it. I just said the two issues did not make me want to read more. Well, you have to also understand it's a very feminist book. I didn't get the Why vibe. I didn't get so much. I didn't get the vibe from that. Why do you wait, hate women and pandas so much? <laughs> I because they're they just have, and cuddly. Come on, giggle dicks. <laughs> you want to know why? Why? It's because I don't hate women and pandas. I hate everything, and they just Fair have enough. women and pandas Fair are enough. included in that. Giggle dicks hates everything. Yes. <laughs> so, that that blew me away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I liked Extremity a lot. Um, I'm trying, I'm really and trying. Daniel Warren Johnson, if you read this, it's no offense to you. It just. Read this. How is he going to read this podcast? Yeah, if you listen, whatever. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really trying to think of the last time I was like, "Whoa." When is there anything I was like, "Hey, Katrina, you have to see this, or you have to watch this, or you have to read this." Besides Manny Machado's throw from third to first, I watched that like 16 times today. Um, he should not. I know you haven't read fifth. Preacher yet, you son of a bitch. I don't I'm know almost how you done. Make yeah, that she's throw. she's finished it, and I keep telling you to read Preacher. You've even read Preacher. Uh oh! You need to read Preacher. God damn it! Uh oh! Um, Jimmy, J- Jenny, and Robert have Preacher. They do. It, and is I this, got them hooked on it. Is this Jenny Junk Pile? Mm-hmm. Yes, Jenny, Jenny Junk Pile. The person that backed Human out tree of the robots, first. Uh, they knocked me um, off my feet. The, uh, super, or he did. The yeah. Super dinosaur. No, I like Aww, super dinosaur. Be but nice to super dinosaur. I'm not picking on him, just saying. Wowed you. There were certain times in Invincible where I was like, "Whoa!" Oh, yeah. The finale did that. The finale of Invincible did. Really? Yeah. I, I, I re- it was a good send off. That is how you end a series. Um, I agree. You end it on your terms. It's not like because we're being canceled. It's we right. want it. Yeah. We've told the story. My story's over. There's nothing left to tell. Yeah. But it left enough open that if they wanted to pick up and do a spin off or go Books. with another character, you, they could. They didn't close the entire door yeah there's windows open yeah mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to rack my brain now i'm kind of pissed off there were uh there were certain parts in um the first walking dead telltale season with clementine with clementine okay that i i really really right enjoyed games. like the decisions were drastic they 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 caught up to you and stuff like that i really like that but i i can't really think of anything in my mind right now that kind of blew me away that i was like holy shit and that's kind of disappointing to me honestly really yeah i'm, I'm, well, I'm a little you bummed know, right you now. probably just aren't thinking I, I have a hard time thinking on the fly mm-hmm. i need to prepare i need yeah. to have like time to think about it oh you know like i can tell you when i was growing up my biggest influences were silence of the lambs reservoir dogs and we're talking like and professional, like maybe ten years old. But you know, times I should not have been watching this stuff. No, but you know, the first time I saw Reservoir Dogs, I went, "Wow!" Mm-hmm. I have to watch this again. That's I so Pulp Fiction, like I saw oh, that at way too yeah. young of a young of an age. But I have to watch it again. every weekend. I, I went over to my mom's my house. house. My stepdad had the tape, and I would just I watched it. And sure, like there were a lot of things I didn't understand, and I would always laugh when. You know, he tell the story. I about apologize if anybody hears ass. this fucking. I don't think it's registering, so don't worry about it. But yeah, there, there. I, I mean, even uh, watching uh, Clockwork Orange for the first time, I mm. think gave me a wow. Yeah. Um, How for, for different weird reasons. Movie. There's there was this porno going around when I was in high school. And knocked your socks <laughs> Come on, off. You know, go on. There was, there was always that porno. That I'm never. I'm, I'm like this dance porno. Dude had sex with a, a, a glass tube, and when he shot the load it came out into the glass tube but the glass tube was attached to a uh, taxidermy moose head and the uh the semen came out of the moose's nose and 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 yeah that's a lot of physics working <laughs> alan was just like staring at me like what the fuck really it's like a really like surreal 70s porno you know what that's a You'd very like niche 
audience no, that is for. This, uh, Does this sound familiar? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this story sounds familiar. Not that moose head, but that story sounds familiar. <laughs> I've heard somebody else mention that. Yeah, that's so, not. That's weird. That? I'm really disappointed in myself that I can't think of something. Did you that find I was it in the like, woods? No, I found a box of so, porn in the woods. When we were kids, that's how you would. That's how you would view porn. There was before magical there was any... boxes of porn in the woods. People would bury their porn collection in the woods, and you would find it and be like, twelve years old, and be like, what "Holy shit, titties!" Were you in? Well, right? I was behind any, my any house. Wilderness. There was like an acre behind my house. I it was in a city. sage bush, and it was there was a box of porn. There was no a big woods. lot of land out in la- uh, Lakeside, and I uh, found some porn out there one day. And you're like, "Yay!" I was like, "Oh, hey, what's this? Oh, cool. There's some art. Oh my god, there's tits." But porn and, was just, I mean, those old school magazines were and, so And there were, there were like tapes and like reel-to-reels and you're just like, what? Oh. Reel-to-reels. And then and the, the the weekends, the cable company would screw up and you get the porn channel unscrambled for like an hour and you're like, oh God, this is amazing. You try to jerk off like eight times? No, no. Like you were just like I mean, no, me neither. Was it like Chandler and Joey and you just yeah. had it on because it was on? Yeah, porn. you're just like, what? Um, ending on that note. <laughs> There's nothing um, wrong with jerking off. No, yeah, there isn't. Absolutely not. not. For men or women. Yeah. Uh, I would positive. like to I... thank Werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, giving us a. I'll be a, thinking a of you tonight, Werewolf. Earlier. Yeah. <laughs> the the food is delicious. Serpentine cider. Um, Great. I, Fabulous. Uh, have never heard of you before tonight, but I am a fan, Mr. Serpentine. Uh, we really enjoyed the food. We really enjoyed the the booze. Two of the three comics we really enjoyed. Good com- uh, three I enjoyed comics. Three comics you enjoyed. All good company. Them. Yeah, good company. Um, this is another good episode. Uh, I haven't really put any thought into this. Is going to go out before the weekend of Easter. I feel like it needs to go out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, the next holiday is going to be four twenty, bro. Day, so you could do like an America theme. Ooh. That's a good idea. Ooh. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> well. Super Patriot. I know what you need to read for the America theme. Uh oh. Fourteen ninety two. Uh no, we I get to, we can talk about it off mic. Yes. Okay. Fourteen oh two. Fourteen oh two. You mean? Wait, are you talking about sixteen oh two? Sixteen oh two. Oh, whatever. Yes, we're the getting, we're the gonna Neil get Gaiman there. Marvel one. Yeah, we're gonna get <gasps> yes. there. Yes. Yeah. Let me see Neil Gaiman. Me too. You know what I want? I want to read from Hell on here. Mm, I would love that. I'm a huge Al Moore fan. Wait, I haven't done. You want to? We we should do an entire oh. Alan Moore themed. We'll save episode? that for a later date. Okay. Yeah. It's been a few. It's been a little while since I read Watchmen. I teach Watchmen, so I know. I'd love to be on. Well, Watchmen. I was gonna say every, every, everyone's <laughs> read like, Watchmen, but yeah. like, let's dive. Let, you want to do some deep dives in the crazy mind of Alan Moore? You know what? I was I when I was reading Scott Snyder's Court of Owls, um, and Batman's kind of. I was surprised that that was a very good run. Yes, and and Batman's kind of doing his descent into madness, and you. It was the first time I remember reading a comic, and I'm flipping like this, and it made you turn the book. It made, sorry it made you turn the book yeah and turn the book again and then turn the book again to read it and i was like this is fucking cool like that was one of the first times i was like that's mind wow. blown that's super dope there's robert's mind blown yeah moment. There's your there turn. you go yeah there. so why don't you guys out there in the uh Universe. twitterverse here tweet at robert what are some of your greatest comic yeah, please. Oh my Let God! Me know some of your like holy shit moments. Well, not just comics, video games, movies. Anytime you were like, wow, like oh something, yeah, something hit you and 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 sh- hit your core. Like you were like, it, it changed you. Cause none of the, nobody got me into any of this stuff. Nobody got me into Star Wars. Nobody got me into Quentin Tarantino. I discovered this stuff all on my own. Same here. And I never, you know, I never had somebody guiding me to watch these cool things. Or my read dad these cool hated things. Pulp Fiction. Did he really? Oh, yeah. Really? That was back when Tower had a video store. Mm-hmm. And I remember he rented it one night and he watched it with Maria and then I watched it, which she uh, greatly opposed. Um, Didn't that come out the same year as Rex Manning Day? That's I think it's Empire weekend. Records? Yeah. Such a great um, movie. I know. I know. <laughs> you quote the shit out of that movie. I really love together. that movie. It was What's just Rex Manning Day today? a few days ago. What's with today today? Lucas is the best part. He anyway. is. Um, <laughs> I'll have to explain my art to you. I do want to. I do want to. Calvin <laughs> gluing the quarters on the ground. Yes. Whatever they are. If you have an independent, if you're listening right now and you have an independent comic and you'd like us to discuss it on here, please let me know. Absolutely, I need. We all need new comics to read. Not only that, but I, I'd like to bring. We're, we don't have a huge following, but we do have a pretty good amount of downloads, and any attention to your comic book will help will be you. beneficial. So yeah, uh, let me know. We're more than happy to read it. <clears throat> 
We'd like to keep it in the theme of whatever that theme is for that time. Or it can even be for the future, too. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, just hit me up. I'm easy to find on Twitter. It's just 9to5nerds. It's the same on Facebook or Instagram or any of the, your social media platforms. I know the kids nowadays are all using the Instagram. The kids. Um, the kids. It's those stories. Because Snapchats are reserved for just showing your dong. <laughs> is that what that's for? Snapchat is all about showing your dick. Okay. I don't have one. So you have I don't a Snapchat? Know. Of course. Okay, so if you want to see Alan's dick... He's uh, on Snapchat. He's on Snapchat. Yeah. And if you want to send dick pics, send them to Robert at 9to5nerds. Or no. you can send them to 9to5nerds co-host at Twitter. He never checks. He, doesn't he, check he won't shit. check it anyway, but... No. You know what? Send it anyway. Send Just a dick a second. pic to him. He doesn't listen. Ever. To anything. Doesn't his family? His family does. So good. Corey's family. If Don't you warn him great. about dick pics. He will love your messages. That'll be the end of this episode. We're out. (laughs)